Folks, I am proud to announce we have now released the iMatch Hitch Hanger. We're gonna show you more about these later in the video, so stick around. All right, folks, so we are gonna compare a Spico Quick Hitch to a John Deere iMatch today. Uh, gotta get this installed. Still don't have all my tools out here, but I gotta loosen up, gotta loosen up this fitting. I hate these turnbuckles. It's just gonna mount a Quick Hitch. Doesn't matter if it's a Red Spico or a John Deere iMatch or whatever else you get, um, they're all gonna mount the same way. Now, so I bought this iMatch brand new. I did not have one handy, so I got one. Now you can save some money on an iMatch and on anything else John Deere if you go to 247parts.com, enter code GWT during your checkout, you're gonna save some money on anything you order. Could be oil change kits, could be an iMatch, LED lights that they have, all sorts of stuff, 247parts.com. Now even with those savings, you're normally still paying a bit of a premium for that, uh, that John Deere green paint. But to each their own. The Spico E-Hitch over there is available only in red. Now I've honestly never struggled with a linchpin as much as I have with this one that's on here. I don't know what the deal is with that, just the design of it. This is a linchpin that whatever, I don't, I've never seen this before. So it's, I'm sure it's got a name, but uh, this is the one that came with that eye match. I, I'm just, I guess I'm just an idiot. I don't know how to, I don't know how to operate that thing. I'm used to these, right? You just flip them closed and open them back up. But anyway, that's what's come, that's what comes with the eye match right there. Come on. It's out. There we go. They're both out there. It works, but see, look at that. There we go. Now both sides did it. But lots of times, it's just the one side that does it and you can't pull it out. You can wiggle it if you have enough room. Yeah, it's all right. I like the old style better. Get this other one on there. Come on, buddy. There we go. Not an easy operation, I'll tell you. Somebody with arthritis, kind of a pain in the butt. I don't have arthritis, and it's a pain in the butt. Okay, come on. I like the concept, I don't like the execution of it. Holy cow. We're gonna lengthen that out a second here. doesn't even want to lock back into place. Come on. You know, this is an appropriate time to mention that I am still looking for a good hydraulic top and side link partner. So anybody out there watching, if you've got a good lead, a good source, let me know because I'd love to have a good partner. I got this link made locally uh, from a local supply shop, but they're just not, they're not the right partner uh, to make these in high production. So Got this one custom made, it's not gonna be the, the right solution, so let me know. All right, folks, so we are gonna compare today a John Deere iMatch versus a Spico E-Hitch. These are both category one quick hitches for the back of your tractor. You saw how this one went on. They go on just like any other attachment does, and that's, that's kind of, well, that's kind of what the quick hitch is all about, is solving that, that pain of, of putting something on each uh, individual arm there. You can do all three arms at one point. You want to have an attachment that's compatible. So the pins on your attachment line up with all three of these points, okay? And so it doesn't matter. I could put this quick hitch on this tractor, this quick hitch on this tractor. You can have a, a John Deere, a Summit, a Kubota, Coyote, Massey Ferguson, whatever, as long as it's category one. But I'm excited today. We're gonna to show you a new hitch hanger product that fits the John Deere iMatch. My fabricator, I sent him my iMatch and, and I figured I'd buy a brand new one. So I got that one here, it's all nice and shiny. We're gonna slap those hitch hangers on here too. I'm gonna to tell you more about that a little bit later on. Okay, so these are really the two kind of the top dogs that are on the market out there. The Land Pride's a pretty popular one as well, but not quite in the same category as these two. So first thing, both of these are gonna weigh in at about 70 pounds. I think the weight is important on a quick hitch. Um, there's some others that are out there, actually quite a few others that are gonna be down in the anywhere from the 40 to the 60 pound range. When you're talking a pretty simple 
hunk of steel, weight matters. And so if you're able to cut out 10, 20, 30% of the weight out of one of these attachments, that's a lot. And in my mind, that's a lot in the wrong direction. You wanna have a substantial beefy piece of equipment that's gonna stand the test of time, not something that's gonna be prone to torquing, tweaking, um, or just shearing, breaking thin metal. All right, next thing up, just visually looking at these units, just take a look at the steel. You can see the thickness here of the tube steel compared uh, to the tube steel over here on the, on the Spico. Substantial difference there, just a thicker square tubing versus more of a thinner rectangular tubing. Um, perhaps this is a heavier gauge given the fact that the weight is still about the same, but an interesting observation nonetheless. Next point of interest I think on here, take a look at the gusseting or almost lack of gusseting over here on the John Deere iMatch. Um, really small. You got a little bit of, just a tiny little wedge that's kind of in each corner. Now we do have, have these guys covered up right now uh, by the hitch hangers that are on here, but you can see the hitch hanger follows the line of the gusset all the way up. It's a lot more substantial, a lot beefier, and really giving it more rigidity all the way across. And then you really can't see the last major difference by looking at it. Well, unless you want to talk about paint color, you can paint that Spico any color you want, I promise you. But I think a hundred dollars or so upcharge just to get John Deere green is a little bit much. When a Spico and Spico Red <laughs> will do just the same thing. Now, perhaps one of the most significant cost differences between these two, besides just the cost of the units themselves, are gonna be the requirement of bushings, all right? And you'll notice in these lower hooks, a dimensional difference. And we've done videos all about this. I don't really wanna dwell on it in this video. We'll link to other videos. But every attachment that you wanna hook up to your John Deere iMatch, and for most other quick hitches out there, for that matter, are gonna require a set of these bushings. A lot of the bushings are gonna have a long kind of collar on them as well, and it depends on your style of attachment. You either get, either get this kind right here um, that is kind of made to fit in a clevis hook where you have two pieces of steel you can put it on there, or you have the long style with the collar that goes like on, on just the end of a a long pin. But the point being that depending on what style you need, you could end up paying 40 bucks or more for a set of bushings. It just kind of makes it have a, a tight, snug fit inside of this lower hook. And now this thing won't even fit over here on the Spico, okay? The reason is this hook is designed to fit directly to a category one pin. So there's no bushings that are required. There's no other kind of extra hidden cost that you have to get for every attachment. Once you have the quick hitch, you're done. With the iMatch and most others out there, you gotta count on getting bushings and adding up those additional costs for every attachment that you have now and plan to get in the future. Now, as far as everything else goes, these are really the same thing, okay? So the spacing from left to right is gonna be the same. The spacing from bottom to top is gonna be the same. This guy here and this guy are both gonna have adjustable placements for the top hook because even though there's a standard specification that controls dimensions for the quick hitch and compatible attachments, there's still, it allows for some variation here on that top link, that, that spacing requirement there. So it's nice to have that. There are old eye matches actually, and some really cheap ones that have a welded top hook. So you lose that flexibility. In my mind, you wanna avoid getting one of those even if it's a really good deal. Uh, the top hooks actually on both of these units are both oversized, all right? Like you could put a bushing on there if you want to, um, but a bushing's not included in the set that you get from John Deere. You just don't really need one for that top hook. It's nice to have some additional flexibility in play to help get things hooked up nicely. The spring-loaded handles, you know, both operate the same way. Same exact thing right there on both. So at the end of the day, it's really the same thing. They're both gonna be a quality piece of equipment. I'm not putting this down that it's not a quality piece of equipment. There are some, some differences in its design for sure. Um, cost and bushings being the most significant detractors to why I would not want an eye match and probably matching green paint, I guess, being the protractor. Is that right? Protractor, You seen? have you seen that little uh, thing? I'm protractor and it's a protractor with a we're gonna go with Protractor. Anyway, so you get where I'm going with this all. Now, a couple of good things about these. Uh, we lost one. We had a whole set on here before, but you can get these quick change pins. You can see these bolts, okay, on both of these. That's what they come with. Nothing really quick change about that, but if you go to boltonhooks.com, I don't, I don't have a, an affiliate partnership with them, but they make these quick change pins really nice to swap out and adjust your top link. They also have extended top hooks, okay, for kind of both the, the import side and the John Deere iMatch side of things. So check them out. Ken's a great guy over there. A lot of cool products besides just these couple of things I mentioned, boltonhooks.com. All righty, now I'm looking around for the hitch hangers. I got them somewhere around here, but we're gonna put those on now. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, let's get these bad boys installed. One for the left, one for the right. Now, we kind of designed these to be installed with this, this extra portion hanging towards the back. Have seen a few folks install them the other way. So like this one over on this side, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't interfere with anything that's on your, um, you know, on your three point or on your quick hitch, I should say. But we're gonna go ahead and get this, uh, take these bolts off of here, or these nuts, I should say. Washer. Take our little retainer bracket off. Pick that up so I don't lose it. There we go. Kind of work that up. You can see, you'll see a difference in the steel design, all right? Because we kind of match this one to the radius and, and diameter and all that whatever else stuff that the eye match has. And you can see, well, let me show you here how it kind of falls back a little bit. So that's what this, this piece of steel here holding it in place is gonna do. Have the lock nuts on there and everything else. And you can see the weld that's on the seam. This is our wide point, all right? And there's a little bit of variation there on the amount of weld that you have. And so we tried to make it just a hair wider than that just to account for it. So some might be a little bit more snugly fit than others. There's very little play in it really either way. I'm gonna take my gloves off for this part. Alrighty folks, so this feels pretty good. We got them on there. We've actually already sold uh, a few sets. Uh, some folks just didn't want to wait. We didn't have the listing up, but they'd emailed and we just made it work. So anyways, you can fit three 70 pound or 41 pound suitcase weights on either this rail, on both rails, I should say. So you can get six total weights on here, six times 70, 420 pounds, plus these weigh 30 pounds. All right, so up to 450 pounds of additional ballast weight, additional counterweight. You know, so of course, the bigger the tractor that you go, the more ballast weight that you need. A lot of the manuals will tell you the minimum ballast weight that's required. Even on a small tractor like a 1025R, um, the manual is gonna say you need 1,050 pounds of ballast weight on the backside of your machine, all right? And that is a lot of counterweight. You can't get that just in one form. You have to have additional forms, more than, more than one thing. So, you know, rim guard, they're a channel sponsor for good reason. We're all about safety here. It goes right inside the tires, makes a big difference, but that alone is not enough. You know, you want to have something on your three-point hitch. Um, get wheel weights if you can, perhaps. And so the hitch hangers are a great way to get additional ballast weight without using up the three-point hitch. You can put a tool on there and use it for something else. That's why rim guard's so good because it's just kind of inside the tires and hidden away there. You don't have to think about it. It's not doing anything. Same thing with wheel weights, right? So you put something on your three-point hitch, like a ballast box. Um, you know, we actually also offer the Versa bracket that you can put on here and hang suitcase weights. It becomes a trailer mover as well. Um, has a little platform. You can put a chainsaw in there. You can put a toolbox on there. It has chain hooks, all sorts of other things as well. And so while the primary function would be additional counterweight or ballast weight for your tractor, Another great function of the hitch hanger is, say you want to get more down pressure on attachment, uh, on a landscape rake, on a box plate, whatever it is, you can have this additional weight kind of pushing down and pushing down into the ground with that attachment to get better scraping power. Say even a rear blade, if you're scraping your driveway, scraping snow and ice off and that kind of thing in the wintertime, some more ballast weight back here not only helps stabilize the tractor and keep traction going, but gives you more down pressure and scraping ability. So both versions of these hitch hangers are made right in the USA, American Steel, American Labor. They're my fabricator that I use. This is patent pending, uh, really excited about it. You know, it's a great complement to the Versa bracket that we have again. 
it's a good combination, especially the larger tractors you have. You want to consider both of these to have adequate ballast weight. Just look at your manual. It hopefully will tell you, but again, that point of reference, even on a small subcompact tractor needing 1,050 pounds minimum of ballast weight means the bigger you go, substantially more weight is needed. If you already have suitcase weights, we sell these just as a pair you can get. Same thing with the Versa Bracket. But if you are looking for a complete setup, we have bundles, okay? So for the hitch hanger bundles or the Versa Bracket bundles or both, you get your weights, you get your, your brackets there too, and we ship it right to you. And while we were showing green weights in the video, we used to carry green weights, but because of the whole that whole pandemic thing we went through, it just became too challenging. We switched over to only black weights, which, I mean, look, even on the John Deere tractor, the arms, everything, most of the back of this tractor is black, all right? So, I mean, come on, black goes just fine <laughs> with this, so makes it easy and streamlined. Black hangers, black versa bracket, black weights. Alrighty, folks, well, if you're interested in getting some of these products, we'd love to help you out. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship attachments all over the country every day of the week. So we mentioned quite a few ways to get ballast weight in this video, but there's more than what we said. So if you have something else that you use for ballast, leave a comment down below. I hope you enjoyed today's video and we'd love to have you stick around. So hit that subscribe button right down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.